I'm with Alex uh, Crook from Henderson Global Investors in London. And Alex, you're on your first visit here for a couple of years. What's happened in the UK since you were last there? Um, in the last two years, we think you've been through a bit of a meltdown and we wonder about the yep. state of the market. But have things improved? Meltdown's a, g- a good word for it. Yeah. We've had obviously primary banking crisis. You know, two of the major banks in the UK are now majority owned by the government. So yes, you know, it has been a, a difficult period. What's happening from here, though, is things are gradually picking up slowly, and uh, you know, GDP growth expected to be about one and a half percent this year, and maybe two and a half next year. So you know, picking ourselves off the ground, as it were, uh, that's helping because of the, the currencies had a huge devaluation. Again, you'll, you'll see that in the exchange rates. But you know, it, that should lead to a bit more inward investment, more competitive industry. In, in the UK, and uh, you know, things will be a long grind from here, but, but slowly getting better, definitely. And Bankers Investment Trust, uh, for which you're the portfolio manager, how did you manage that trust through the crisis? Again, what we, we had to do is recognise that uh, markets were, were going to fall in value and therefore sell equities. So we, we sold you know, almost a quarter of the portfolio, raised cash against that, which we set on. Uh, and the stocks we retained, we tried to retain sort of solid businesses, businesses with good cash flow, uh, not particularly geared and in debt, and therefore you know, not to the uh, reliance on banking industry. So really trying to retreat to, to good quality companies. And in the end, you know, even that, sorry, even that sort of uh, began to hurt, uh, you know, as people just wanted to sell equities. They just had to get out. But, you know, actually it worked very, very well in the early phase of that cycle, and it's, you know, recovered quite nicely. And the currency has been a big movement in attracting people back to UK stocks? Yeah. Yes, I think so. And also, yes, because if you're an exporter sitting in the UK and you know, exporting abroad, you're, you're very competitive now. Uh, so that will help things. But the other thing, I think, is just that UK market is, you know, almost 80% of the revenue of UK listed companies is global, is outside the UK. So you've got some, you know, from the mining stocks to the pharmaceuticals, uh, you've got some big international companies in London, and that, that is attracting investment again. And do you include in that uh, uh, oil shares? Are you buying into oil shares anywhere? Yeah, we're looking really oil services, I think, rather than the big major oil companies. Um, what, what's happening there is that those major companies are beginning to want to spend money looking for resources. They're, they're either improving the resources they've got to improve productivity and, and, and consumption, or they're looking for, for new ventures, new opportunities. And you know, that business is really beginning to flow very strongly. For, for example, BP uh, had 19 new projects last year. In 2009, it only had one new project it launched in 2000. So, you know, money's beginning to flow, so we're looking at the companies that service that. So, you know, companies that drill, companies that operate rigs, uh, companies that provide the pipe work for, for new refineries and things. So that, that's where we see a lot of opportunity. And Bankers Trust, you know, your performance through the crisis, through the GFC, uh, you've got a long record of paying dividends. Did you manage to pay a dividend during that period? Yeah, we certainly did. 42 years now of consecutively growing the dividend every year. So we have to go back to 1968 before we last held the dividend. Uh, so a long record. Um, we actually covered the dividend last year. A lot of dividend cuts, but we invested in some bonds. There were lots of ways we, we managed to cover that uh, revenue. So we increased the dividend 4%. Last year we're looking uh, to forecast another 4% growth this year. And it, hopefully it'll be better than that because dividends are, are beginning to flow through quite nicely. Now looking ahead, you know, a British election coming up. What does the market normally do during this period? Does it just go into a bit of a... Inertia. We've seen that to some extent, not necessarily inertia, but a sort of period of doubt. And so you're seeing that with, uh, with you know, a lot of pressure on the currencies because you've got no definitive plans. You know, there's no, you don't know which the next government is going to be. And there's a lot of doubt there. Um, I think the consensus, the average view, is there'll be a hung parliament, so no party will get a majority. Uh, but that loss happened in the early 70s, uh, and then you had another election sort of nine months later and a decisive victory. I expect, you know, probably on probability, it's, it's that that occurs another election in a year's time. But uh, either party, you know, is committed to cutting the budget deficit, is committed to uh, you know, improving finances of the country. There are assets we can sell. Uh, there are improvements that should come through because of the currency. So I, I don't think it's as bad as the, the popular press seems to be making it. And how does one in New Zealand invest in bankers' trust? Well, Bankers Investment Trust is quoted on the New Zealand Stock Exchange, so it's there um, quoted in New Zealand dollars. We pay dividends in New Zealand dollars, and uh, you know, if you approach your broker, you can you can buy shares in, in New Zealand. Thank you very much, Alex.